Hey Go-Getters, it's me, Miss McCarthy, and I wanted to thank you for joining me on this episode of Taking on the Fast, your 15-day countdown guide to Florida's Fast Math Assessment. Before we dive in, let me quickly remind you of your big three tips for this practice session and when you take the Fast Math Assessment. Number one, read the problem carefully and make sure that you answer all parts of the problem. Number two, use scratch paper to show your journey, also known as showing your work, but journey sounds a little more fun. Showing your journey is huge, y'all, because it increases the chances that you'll arrive at the correct answer. And if you realize that you're making a mistake somewhere, it allows you to backtrack and figure out where you made that mistake. And number three, dig deep and give it your best. You cannot control what the questions are going to look like, but the one thing that you can control is the effort that you throw down. So give it everything you've got today, the next day, really every day, and especially on test day. Now that we've got those big three locked in, it is time for you to press pause and work out these problems. Then when you're ready, come on back to check your work. I'll see you soon. Welcome back, go-getters. Let's see how you did. Now, I'm about to show you my journey for how I went about solving these answers, and this may look a little bit different or quite similar to what you have. That's okay, because that's the cool thing about math. There's more than one way to arrive at the correct answer. So without further ado, let's get to it and let's do this thing. All right, so the first one is a multi-select problem, meaning that we need to select all of the correct answers and work through all of the answers to find those. So the question says, select all that show another way to represent 5,034 right there. So what I did was I took all of these answer choices and I brought it down here. Now it's important to transfer correctly. So for the first one, it says we have 5,304. Well, I wrote that one in word form, 5,304, which is not the same thing that we're looking for. So I eliminated that one. The next one is 5,034. And I said, this is not a correct way to write that number. So we can eliminate that one too. Now we have 5,034. That is definitely one that we want. So you can see 5,034. That is an answer that I will select at the end. The next one is 5,000 plus 300 plus four. When you compose that expanded form back into standard form, we get 5,304. That is not correct, so we can eliminate that one. However, the next one, 5,000 plus 30 plus four, that expanded form number, if we compose that one back together, it does equal right here, 5,034. So that will be an answer that we choose. And finally, we have 500 plus 30 plus four, which when we compose it back together is what? Yeah, 534. So I've worked all of these out. I've shown my journey on paper. And I'm going to go ahead and mark the third one and the second from the last. Is that right? Making sure 5,034 and 5,034. Awesome. Now pause the video, jot down any notes, and press play when you're ready to continue. So the next problem is our equation editor problem, meaning that we're using this equation editor tool right here. So the problem says, determine the unknown value n in the equation below. So we can see that n is right here in the equation seven times n equals, in parentheses, seven times 20 plus seven times four in parentheses. And so what I did was I just rewrote the problem right here, just transferred it right down onto my paper, which is very important to do, and I made sure that I copied it down correctly. And then I noticed that what we're trying to do is figure out what n is. And I noticed that this factor n had been broken down using the distributive property into 20 and four. So 20 and four, if we put those back together, we will get 24. Seven times 24, so n is the same thing as 24. So let me make sure with my question, it says determine the unknown value of n in the equation. The unknown value would be 24. And what I would do 
is tap two and tap four using my equation editor tool on my computer based test and that would input the answer right there. Pause the video to jot down your notes and press play when you're ready to continue. This next problem is our matching item problem for today. And um, as you can see, I did not put anything down in my workspace for showing my journey because this is something that I can verbally explain what's going on here. I'm not really doing a whole lot of math in my head. I can just show you what I'm doing. So it says, match the point on each number line to its correct unit fraction. So we've got the number lines in these two boxes and we need to match it with the other fractions. And by the way, a unit fraction means that we have to have what in the numerator? A one, right? And as you can see, all of these answer choices, one fourth, one fifth, and one sixth, all have a one in the numerator. So they are all unit fractions. So here we have the point right there at the first hop over, and it is out of one, two, three, four parts. So for this one, I would mark one fourth. For the next one, our point is right there at the first fraction, the first part of our fraction, our unit fraction, and starting at the zero, there are one, two, three, four, five total number of equal parts. So we should have a one in the numerator and a five in the denominator, which would make our answer one fifth. Pause the video to jot down any notes that you still need to make, and then when you're ready, press play. This problem is an editing task problem, all right? And so what we have to do is complete the statement about the two-dimensional figure below to make it true. So this is the two-dimensional figure. I notice what looks like a straight line with two endpoints. That's what I'm seeing. So when I do this, it says the figure above is, and I would click this right here to drop down my answer choices. This figure above is a line, line segment, or ray. Which one is it? Yeah, it's a line segment. I'm gonna go ahead and get my red. It's a line segment. Hey, it's a line segment. Because it contains a straight path, we click this and it populates this right here. I know it's kind of hard to see the border, but it pops up that drop down or drop up menu where we have to pick what we need to select to make it true. So because it contains a straight path that goes on forever in both directions, no, it doesn't go on forever in both directions. It stops because it has two endpoints. So it, that contains one endpoint and goes forever in the opposite direction. What would that be? A ray, right? Or because it contains a straight path, that contains two endpoints, yes. So we would select or click on those two answer choices and that is how you solve this problem. And notice here that I didn't really show any work for my journey and my workspace because I did a lot of thinking through the vocabulary going on there. I didn't have to work out anything really. Pause the video to jot down any notes that you still need to make and when you're ready, press play. The next problem is our multiple choice problem of the day. So we're looking for one correct answer here. It says, what is the liquid volume in the measuring cup to the nearest quarter cup? Well, I know that a quarter equals to the nearest fourth. So if I'm jotting that down, I didn't jot that down, but I will over here. Zero fourths, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, or the next whole. So we'll say four fourths. This is the same thing as zero. This is the same thing as one. And two fourths would be the same thing as what? It's equivalent to one half, okay? So all of these right here would be to the nearest quarter. What I did was I said, okay, it's pointing. It's between one cup and two cups. So I know it's one and something, and it's at this line right up here, if you can see it. I'm just kind of pulling that information down. I know that this right here is one and one fourth, and this next spot that it's measuring to would be one and two fourths or one and a half cups. And do we see that as an answer choice? We do, don't we? It's right up here, choice D. 
So I would mark choice D. Let me make sure though, A says one fourth of a cup, no. B says half of a cup, that's less. One and one fourth is close, but one and a half is our correct answer there. It's halfway, it's exactly halfway between one cup and two cups, so it's one and a half cups. Pause the video to jot down any notes that you still need to make, and when you're ready, press play. And finally, we have our graphic response item display. This is where we have graphics. We might need to click, we might need to drag. Things can get really interesting with a graphic response item display question. So just be ready for anything, okay? All right, this one says that the lengths in inches, or written like this, inches, of eight insects are shown in the table below. So we've got a table here with the length of eight insects there three inches, four inches, three inches, five inches, and so on. It says to click the number line to create a line plot showing the lengths of the insects. So over here, we have our line plot. And I did show a little bit of my journey down here, putting them in order. So I said three, three, four, 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 five, five, and six. And then I counted them again to make sure that there were eight insects. This is going to help me because now that it's placed in order, it makes it easy to go ahead and select my answer. So if I were taking this on the computer, click on this line plot up here. For In this case though, we're going to pretend like we're clicking and, and right on it. So maybe when I click it, it makes an X. So right above the three, I need one, two X's. Above the four, we need three X's because there are three insects that have four inches. How many X's do we need above the five? Two, one, two. And how many insects were six inches long? Just one. So I'm just gonna fix this X right here. So your line plot should look just like this. Go ahead and pause the video and jot down any notes that you still need to make. And when you're ready, press play. Thanks again for joining me on this episode of Taking on the Fast. Before we go, let me remind you that practice is not something we do once we're good. It's the one thing we do that makes us good. And there's still time for you to practice and get these skills locked in. And a great way to do that is to join me on some of my video lessons on Taking on the Best. I'll see you next time, go-getters. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it.